was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour i first believed my chains are gone to me his word my hope secures he will my shield and portion be as long as life endures my chains are gone i've been set free Amen. God is great. All the time. Welcome to worship. We remember that our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And our vision is believing, belonging, and becoming. And we live into that each and every uh, moment of our church's life history. And we know that we have been a church since 1858 in this community. So a long history of doing mission and ministry, and we get to celebrate that today. So welcome to all who are on site, and also a special welcome to those who will be watching this online. And uh, again, in the name of Jesus Christ, how many of you are grateful that we don't have any snow, any more snow on the ground today? <laughs> Amen? I woke up and hearing that, that wind all night, and woke up this morning and looked outside and went, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> So thanks be to God. And uh, for the weather forecast that is to come, Lord, have mercy and uh, be with all of us. As uh, we join our hearts together, just want you to be mindful of the fact that we do have a shop by the church this coming Thursday, weather storm pending. And so if the weather's bad, we will not be having that shop by the church. But otherwise, you're more than welcome to schedule appointments and to come on in. Now... We know that uh, the DHMs are shifting and changing a little bit in our area, so we want to let you know that as of February 1st, that's tomorrow, we will have the west door unlocked, open to the public, but the office door will still be locked, so just knock 
and just knock loudly and we'll be happy to help you, but staff will be returning, uh, full staff returning on February 1st, and so we're going to hopefully, hopefully keep things moving forward. In terms of the sanctuary, um, we're not going to change a lot. We're going to still leave the ropes just in case, right, in case we have to shift back. Um, but we do know that a uh, few more people are um, going to hopefully feel a little more comfortable coming on site. Uh, but we are so grateful for the technology that has allowed us to get through the pandemic up till now. Amen. <laughs> so as we join our hearts together today, um, I'm going to in introduce Kathy Davis, who's going to talk about Mission Sunday. Good morning. I'm here representing Mission Committee as co-chair, and I uh, want to thank you all for coming for our Mission Sunday. Uh, Mission Sunday and Faith Promise was introduced to our church in 1987 by Pastor Julian Miguel. A faith promise is made in faith that God will provide the means to complete the promise. Projects are chosen based on need and educational value, and over the years, these funds have gone to projects all over the world. Uh, to, to this year, 2021 selections will be seen later today in our presentation as we celebrate all the mission work done by this church, not just the mission committee, but all of the members and groups and committees of this wonderful congregation. And so the uh, Faith Promise selections will be shown in the slideshow. And there's a little uh, paper half sheet at the back table. Uh, detailing this year's Faith Promise recipients with a, a cutoff pledge sheet if you would like to make a pledge. And I believe this will be in the February mailing. So thank you again for being here for our Mission Sunday. Let us join in our call to worship. We are called by Jesus to be in ministry and mission to this world. As we have listened to Jesus' words of teaching, seen the healing ministry, so we must place our trust in him so that we may go and serve. Let us join in our opening, unison opening prayer. Let us join together. Lord of mystery and community, you have called us here this day to remind us of the mission journey you set before us. Help us to pay attention to the words of Jesus as he sent out his disciples on a mission of healing and compassion. Remind us that success is not measured in the cures, but in the striving. Enable us to truly be your disciples in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I invite us to join in our opening song, A Place at the Table. Sorry, I didn't have a 
right psalmist. Sorry, give me a moment. Yeah. 
sing our song as we invite those who are young at heart to come on up. How are you? It's been a while since I've been with you, hasn't it? I know, we've been loving on Sarah, having Sarah come up. So what does this look like? A hat? Could it be a bowl? Maybe a bowl? Do you think it's a hat, though? What do you think? Does it look good? Does it work? All right. I want to tell you about this hat. And I was with Kathy Davis when I got this hat. So when we were in Puerto Rico, and the day we were on the, the clean beat, and I remember that there was this guy, and he was walking along the shoreline, and I noticed that he was walking along the shoreline, he was walking through the park, and he was picking up palm branches that had fallen on the ground. And we, we noticed him walking around, and then, and then we finally said, hey, what are, you, what are you doing? And he said, would you like a hat? And I said, well, I don't, know. I don't know, maybe. And so he started to take the palm branch, and he started to cut. He had a knife, and we kind of teased him because here we are with this guy that we don't know and a knife, right? But he takes the knife, and pretty soon our group started to gather, and he took his knife, and he started cutting the palm branch. And he started cutting off pieces that he didn't want, and he started to shape it until he could do this weaving. And this was his, this is his way of life. He said that he lived on his schedule. He said, I get to work so many hours a day, and then, I, and then he, would, he would move on to other tasks. But he said he learned this skill from his dad. His dad taught him. And he just said that he learned how to weave. And, and as he was making it, you couldn't see it. But then he would look at us, and he would, he would look at my head. And I think at one time he took a piece of the palm branch and wrapped it around my head so we knew that it would fit. And it was just the most interesting experience, this young man. And I have some pictures. I think we've shared some pictures like several years ago when we went on that trip to Puerto Rico. And... I just, I just love to hear his story. I love to, I love to watch him work because he did it with such, with such skill. And of course, it was dark green then, right? It was dark green, and he said, "Just be really careful when you take it home, and then it'll dry." And then he made the flowers to go on. And then, do you see what this is? What does this look like? A bird. So he even put a little bird on mine too. When we think about missions, we think about, sometimes we think about acts of mercy and compassion, don't we? We think about the things that we do for pe people, right? What kinds of things do we do for people? Hmm. Do we collect food items for the food pantries? Yeah. And peanut butter and jelly, right? For PB and J for JC, right? For Jesus Christ, we collected peanut butter and jelly. And what other things do we do? And those are called acts of mercy and compassion. That, that we do, we collect something and we know that it gets to the people who need it most, right? But then there's something that, as the church that we're called to, and that is the work of justice. We heard that word justice in the song. We're called to do justice, and that is to make sure that everyone has what they need to be able to be healthy and whole and successful in life. And so that's the justice issue. We're really good at the mercy and compassion, aren't we? Especially as a church, we're really good at that part because it's easy for us to collect items and then to collect things and then to give it away. But Jesus might be calling us to look at some other situations. When I think about working with the guy who made this, and I can't remember his name. Do you remember his name, Kathy? No, I 
I can't remember his name anymore. But when I think about how he was doing something that he loved, to earn a wage, to work, and to be able to provide the kind of life that he wanted. He was living the life that he wanted. He wasn't at our mercy or our compassion of, of what we would give him for these things. He enjoyed life. And we want to make sure that everyone can live in to their best selves, to be the people that God has called them to be. And so that's why we do what we do in our church, right? We want to make a difference. We want to make a difference. And all of our churches and our community all come together and do amazing things in the name of Jesus for missions, local missions, in our state, and around our world. And so when you hear about the faith promise today, remember that, that the adults fill out pledge cards, but that doesn't mean that you can't get involved in those things as well. Maybe there's one thing on that list that you say, I want to know more about that, or I want to learn more. And we're going to hear about all of the ways that our church works together to make a difference. Remember those acts of mercy and compassion, but also remember that Jesus may calling us be calling us to justice and to make sure that everyone has a place at the table, that everyone has access to everything they need in this world. Would you pray me? Would you join me in prayer? This is a repeat after me prayer. Dear God, thank you for inspiring us and blessing us to be in mission. Help us to do the things that you call us to do. Amen. All right. And I invite us to sing our song of prayer. We come to that time in our service that we lift up uh, joys and concerns as well as uh, celebrations. And so what celebrations do we want to lift up to God? Do you have any celebrations? It was a joy to see our young people in action uh, through Bye Bye Birdie and on the live stream too so that more people could watch it. So thanks be to God. Other celebrations? Any birthdays or anniversaries? Yes, Skylar. Fell down the stairs. What? Fell down the stairs. You fell down the stairs? Is that a joy or a concern? No. It's a concern. <laughs> Are you okay? All right. All right. Prayers for healing. Others that we want to be mindful of today. It's been a joy to get ready for this service and to look back on this past year and to see all the things that we were able to do in spite of a pandemic. And so I'm looking forward to, to celebrating that today. Also, um, we've been asked to pray for Angie. This is Linda Hudson's son-in-law's sister on the prayer chain and in our prayers. She is in the Kansas City Hospital, intubated with a feeding tube. The diagnosis is unknown at this time. So Lord have mercy and prayers for Angie. We also wanna to continue to lift up those who are battling Parkinson's and COVID and cancer and so many other diseases and illnesses. We want to lift up especially those who are grieving this past week 
Are there others that we want to be mindful of? Yes, uh, prayers for all who are in care facilities and those who are missing their families and especially those who are battling dementia and struggle with understanding why, why things are the way they are right now. So, And hopefully things are moving in a positive direction in our area. So thanks be to God. Any others? Well, I invite us then to join in our unison prayer. All praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in whom we live and breathe and have our being. You are the only one worthy of worship. May your will be accomplished as we go to work in your kingdom. Lord, we are in this place today as a people who have benefited from the mission of your kingdom. Before we knew you, someone told us about you. Someone, maybe even several people, shared the light and love of Christ with us. Now we look to share you, Jesus, the light of the world in the midst of a world filled with darkness. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and equip us to be the church, indeed to be Christ to the world. You provide for us and we will never be in want. We confess our own bent towards sinning and thank you for the grace you grant us by the power of the cross. Help us extend that same grace toward our neighbors. Protect us from all evil and keep us strong in times of temptation. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray our family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We come to that time in our service that, that we lift up the mission and ministry that we together participate in on behalf of our local community, on behalf of our state, and on behalf of our conference, as well as the nation. Even worldwide, we engage in mission and ministry to make a difference in the name of Jesus Christ. It is in that spirit that we invite our gifts to come forward this day. let us pray. Almighty God, giver of every good and perfect gift, teach us to render to you all that we are and all that we have, that we may praise you with our whole lives. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Today's gospel lesson is written in the 18th chapter of Matthew, beginning at the 21st birth, verse. Let us stand as we hear these words of God. 
through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. May God add a blessing to the hearing and understanding of this word. Please. So again, as I said before, I am here to represent and provide the message today for our Mission Sunday. Um, it is, in my view, a celebration of what our church here was able to do for our community and, and area uh, during this uh, trying time we've been through. So 2020, oh, what a year. Pandemic, election, protests. And Columbus FUMC responding to the challenges to support our community. So welcome to Mission Sunday. The Mission Committee wants to celebrate all that this church, all kinds of committees, groups, and individuals have been doing and continue to do to respond to the pandemic and all the other problems of 2020 in such a compassionate way. Last year, next slide. Last year, we had a speaker here from the big garden, Nathan Morgan, at our Mission Sunday. We had a speaker in. We went out to lunch afterwards. Times have changed. And it was shortly after that when COVID-19 struck the Midwest last spring. And the, the, um, Nathan Morgan had told us about uh, the big garden and what they're doing in growing food, teaching people about food. So shortly after the pandemic started, they were meeting to discuss how the different organizations were responding and what they might do. So Albert Varis from Latino Center worked with him and they came up with an idea of employing young adult interns to work on urban agricultural projects in South Omaha. So they reached out and developed more gardens. Through the program, they had 14 interns hired maintain and harvest over 200 raised garden beds in Omaha and the two acre plots outside of Omaha. And we helped, our UMW group helped in this effort by labeling stakes for starting the seedlings. 350 stakes were manually labeled by UMW to help start these gardens. Another thing that the mission committee in order to support and thank all the essential workers during that time of shutdown, we were able to deliver popcorn on Fridays, different entities on each successive Friday, until we were able to show some small support and appreciation to the hospital workers, nursing homes, East Central Health District, police's, police office, sheriff's office, the dispatch center, mental health workers, we plastered all of the essential workers that we could think of to just brighten their day and thank them. And that was the hospital people actually in the pictures. In the fall, uh, for the school staff, we joined with UMW, the mission committee and UMW got together in order to thank them for going back to school and uh, you know, serving in that capacity where they had not been while we were doing the popcorn. So for them, we got a pack of hot chocolate and an encouraging message was attached to each packet and delivered to all the school staff, teachers and all the staff 
at the Lakeview and Columbus Public Schools. To help our own church, the church initiated the Shop by the Church days where we could come and pick up our script, drop off uh, um, whatever, and get our devotional books, etc. So this was started by the church to, to keep in touch with us and us with the, uh, everybody else. Peanut and Stretch, after the lockdown, our congregation continued to feed and they did this at the shop by the church or whenever they could. But since we weren't meeting regularly in church, we uh, decided to just accumulate all the food that was donated from March until December. And this was split evenly between <coughs> the recipients. <coughs> Here's a feeding uh, peanut. <coughs> we will continue to support the same recipients from Peanut Stretch in 2021. And until things get totally back to normal, we'll continue to just accumulate and uh, divide evenly for the recipients here that are listed that we will be supporting this year. Uh, hopefully there will be a num since it was canceled last year. <coughs> Another thing that the mission committee uh, did along with uh, when there was shop by the church weekend uh, days, we brought a truck uh, to the parking lot and uh, advertised to have people just from our church and the, and the community to help us stuff the truck for the food pantries. So this was donated to the various food pantries around the area. And the last shop by the church that we had the truck at, we um, used to kickstart uh, our own food pantry in the outreach center that was started by Sandy Martinson. That's a picture of the food pantry. <coughs> and uh, Sandy has partnered with uh, Orphan Grain Train. And from time to time, they've received additional products that we can share. Uh, we've had pork roasts, turkeys, hams to distribute uh, uh, to those in need. Our food pantry is private, so there's no red tape for anybody that's asking for help. It is open by appointment, so if you know someone in need, let them know to call and ask about help from our food pantry. It does include also a refrigerator and freezer, so we do provide not just uh, shelf products, but also fresh produce and frozen as it's available. The Habitat for Humanity, <coughs> we always have members of our congregation that go one Saturday during the summer <coughs> to support uh, the Habitat build. And uh, we were able to continue and do that this year. They actually built two houses this year, side by side, and got the projects done. The Saturday that our group worked, we helped with landscaping and in building sheds. They social distanced, wore masks, and completed the task. And thank you to Chuck Kinnison for organizing this and providing lunch for the group. We were very thankful and proud to be able to continue and provide our annual salad luncheon. We modified it to a drive-through event with only one menu item, but that was our famous hot chicken salad with bread, brownie, and fruit. It was very successful and appreciated by the community we had many comments that they were, so were just excited that something had not been canceled. We sold out. Uh, there we were set up. <coughs> and having the drive through salad luncheon enabled the mission committee to meet its obligation to our covenant relationship with the United Methodist Mission Church in Willow, Alaska. Wednesday night meals continued. Um, the community meals provided out of their outreach center, they had to change their format, was changed to to-go. At first, meals were delivered, but currently it's still continuing in a drive-through, the back alley, takeout format. Healthy God congregations pitched in. They got a grant and we used this to purchase tablets that were given to nursing homes so help their residents stay in touch and see their families. 
Here's some pictures of uh, delivering uh, the tablets and other um, materials that were helpful. Healthy congregations also organized us to help to celebrate our lockdown congregation members when they had birthdays or anniversaries. We did drive-by events and outside the window to recognize and celebrate these occasions and brighten their day. I was fortunate to be working from home at the time and was able to participate in a number of those. It was fun. Our Hearts for Mission group, led by Donna Pearson, meeting at her house, continued with their mission work. This last year, they made 420 dresses and 50 diapers for the orphan grain train, 220 diapers and pins went to MMDC, and 80 quilts to foster kids' closet. Another modified project to prove successful was our Christmas Heart Project by the Mission Committee. We had no tree, we had no hearts, we had no social gathering that we provide for the recipients when they pick up their gifts. We had to sign up for the hearts online via Sign Up Genius or calling into the office, and gifts were also distributed as a drive-through pickup uh, scenario. We were so pleased to see such an awesome response by the congregation to fill this need in the community. There's some of the gifts getting ready for distribution and a picture of the sign-up genius screen. We also use more gift cards during uh, this last uh, Christmas Heart Project so that more people could participate without having to go out to a store and shopping. This benefited in many ways. We had an increased sale of the script and it also gave the parents the opportunity to do their own shopping and selecting of gifts for their children. So we might continue with more gift cards in this project for that reason. And then thank goodness for technology. How could we have carried on without that? Committees and groups continue to meet via Zoom. Here we have Bible and Bag, Summer Sunday School, we have the prayer team and the return to church committee, the evangelism committee, and church services. Sunday morning and Ignite via Facebook and other platforms and continue now both in person and online options. Thank you pastors and all who help with these services to provide worship, music, and celebration. And youth messaging on Facebook and other platforms Thank you, Sarah. Youth messages, youth worship, cooking with a message, and much, much more. The Outreach Center still had a block party, modified to be a drive-through hot dog supper. And new groups were created to reach out to our congregation since we are not seeing each other in person as much. We formed several groups called Circles of Care with a leader that reaches out and touch base with, um, to their circles with information on church events, sharing inspirational messages, and just seeing how things are going with everyone overall. Then we move on to the election. Along with the pandemic, we also faced an election for which I have no words to describe other than divisive. And FUMC, again, goes into action. <coughs> Crystal Social, Christian Social Witness held a prayer walk downtown the night before the presidential election. There they are, setting off. And several committees helped to finance yard signs to remind everyone to love one another. And then along with the election, we also experienced protests in reaction to systemic racism in our society. So the Christian Social Witness Committee stepped up and offered various studies about race, including a video series led by Lisa Weber. And there are some of the titles that were studied. So finally, we we're here to review our faith promise. One recipient was changed from the Nigeria-Nebraska Partnership Orphanage to the Outreach 
center food pantry. So these are the various uh, entities that will be supported by your faith promise. So they're near and far. And uh, we very much appreciate your support. And again, I just uh, am so proud of the congregation that we have here in our church leadership in supporting mission and managing to not just get through this pandemic, but show our compassion within our community and beyond in response to it. Thank you. Can we express our appreciation for all who serve on the missions committee and lead us in these important endeavors? Yes. Let's sing our closing song, Here I Am, Lord. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. hear and receive our benediction. Do you have another slide? There we go. Now may the Holy Spirit's encouragement and Christ's once and for all act of giving and worship empower us to continue our worship in acts of giving of our thoughts, our prayers, our resources, and our whole selves. May our giving be an act of worship that fills us with joy and confidence in our faithful God to share the blessings we have so richly received. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. <laughs>